Hi everyone, Spider-Man 1991 here to talk about my comics for the week. First of all, from Marvel, Captain America 619. The conclusion to the Gulag story. Once again, we get three different three different parts to this story. First off, we get Black Widow, pretty much getting getting some explosives together, then collecting a heli then getting a helicopter so that she can go and break Bucky out of prison. Now we get to Bucky's story. The warden has Bucky tied up so that he can learn information information about so about some Soviet sleeper agents that were trained by the Winter Soldier and put in America. And the warden wants to know how to activate evade it, so he tries to basically extract the information from Bucky's mind. And the warden doesn't want to control the sleeper agents, he just wants to sell the information on the black market, get rich. And after he gets his information, he throws Bucky back in the prison for one final prison yard fight. And Bucky's final opponent is another ex-supervillain known as the Unicorn, who can shoot beams of energy from this third eye on his forehead. And while Bucky's dealing with the... Bucky's trying to hold his own against this guy, a hole blasts... He blasts a hole through the wall, Bucky decides to escape... And while the unicorn's going after him and trying to hit him, he blows up most of the prison. And Bucky's still trying to get out. He gets close, but when, all, when it seems like Bucky's about to get caught, he gets saved by the Black Widow. And she gets she takes him back to her chopper, and they fly off. Now for a kind of epilogue here with Steve Rogers. Steve and Nick Fury have found, found a warehouse with the titanium armor used by the assassin who killed... Who tried to kill Peter Henry Peter Grinch? And once Steve gets some more information, he goes to the president to try to get Bucky clear and out of Russian out of the Russian prison. And the president says that he'll do his best to try he'll try to do something for Bucky, but Bucky's a fugitive now and he can't be Captain America. And right now the president needs a Captain America. So we still get and we still get. And Nick is also trying to push Steve back to being Captain America by saying that Bucky, saying that Bucky can't be, he agrees with the president that Bucky can't be Captain America anymore, and that Bucky never really wanted the shield because Bucky was only holding it after, was pretty much making sure that no one else would get it after Steve died. And pretty much we're getting the final nudges here for Steve to get the costume, to carry the shield again once more and be the Star Spangled Avenger. And our last page here is a little teaser about what's in store for Captain America. Next month, Cap the new Captain America series will relaunch with Steve back in the costume, carrying the shield. And this si this Captain America series will be re-entitled Captain America and Bucky, and we'll just basically tell flashbacks back to World War II of Bucky and Cap saving the world. And also next month, the Captain America movie comes out. So, big month for Cap. Uh, the Gulag story arc, um, I just say it pretty much gets tries to get to the next status quo with trying to establish Steve back as Captain America and getting Bucky out of the suit. That's pretty much what my opinion of what the whole purpose of the Gulag story was. Um, if you want to know how it's all set up, then I'd say read it. But I think before you read Gulag, you'd have to go back and read Trial of Captain America to see how Bucky's trial went. Then you can read Gulag, and that will set you up for the next series of Captain America comics. Right. One other Marvel this week. Ultimate Comics Spider-Man, number 160. The death of... The conclusion to the death of Spider-Man story. Uh, I'm going to keep this issue in the bag. Well, for the review, though. And I'm probably still going to store it like this. But, as you can see, it's open so that I actually read it. So I can talk about it, but... Pretty much, uh, I don't want to give anything away about how it happens, but Peter is able to save the day, but at a heavy cost, and when you read this, you really, it really is sad, but, and it does feel like this is pretty much the end for the Ultimate Universe as we've known it from the very beginning, and that next month, soon, they're going to relaunch every, relaunch all the Ultimate Marvel series, just to create a new status quo for the Ultimate Universe. So yeah, if you've been following Ultimate Spider-Man from the very beginning, or you've been following the Death of Spider-Man story arc, then I would definitely say pick this up because it is worth it.
Now, for DC, Young Justice number five. There haven't been any Young Just new Young Justice episodes for a while now, but if and if you really like the show and you want to get some new stories, then I'd recommend checking out this comic book series because in this issue the team decides to have a campfire and we do get to know and for their stories they hear about the tale of how how Calder became Aqualad and how Wally West became Kid Flash. And also they talk to Superboy about what it was like in his containment pod. And Superboy pretty much says that he was just fed information, didn't think for himself. But then once he got out of his pod, he started to think he started to think for himself. And one thing's always been on his mind, which was destroying Superman. Okay, clearly we get a little more insight as to why Cadmus created their own super created their own clone, Kryptonian clone. Clearly they wanted Superboy to replace destroy Superman and potentially replace him. That way they have their own that way they have the world's greatest hero under their control. Okay, um Young Ju Young Justice number 5 again. This is pretty much for fans of the TV show. It's I like the show and I in turn I like the comic book. It's not that bad. So it, again, if you if you don't want to wait around for if you if it okay. If it's been too long for you to see a new episode of Young Justice, and you don't want to try to find, see if some other countries got got new episode got new episodes before America by searching the internet, then just read the comic book series. It'll hold you over for a while. Granted, it comes out monthly, but it's close enough. All right, Action Comics nine hundred two, continuing the reign of Doomsdays. Okay. Doomslayer has just killed the Eradicator, but immediately after, Doomslayer starts to feel regret, and apparently he start, and apparently Doomslayer implies that he was also uh, another Doomsday, and that he realized that Doomsday is a mindless monster that brings nothing but destruction, and he basically wants to annihilate Doomsday from the entire universe, and Doomslayer believes believes that the clo the source of all the Doomsday clones is Earth, and that the only way he Doomsday can be get rid of, can be gone from the entire universe is to destroy Earth. So basically, Doomslayer is trying to crash his ship onto Earth, which will create, which will create a mass explosion and annihilate all life. But fortunately, well, the impact will kill all life. But fortunately, Superman, with the combined efforts of Steel, K Supergirl, and Superboy, are doing their best to slow down the impact so it doesn't destroy. Destroy Earth. However, Doomslayer fixes his engine so that even when the ship lands, he'll at least wipe out a continent. And right now, it's getting close to where Metropolis is, so he's trying to wipe out North America. And Superboy, I mean, sorry, Superman basically tells Steel, Superboy, and Supergirl to get get off the ship, and that he'll pretty much lead it, try to lead, lead straight into the ocean, so it doesn't hurt anyone. And of course, once Superman does that, a huge tidal wave comes. But fortunately, there's still three superheroes here, thanks to the com thanks to the combined efforts of Ice Breath, Tactile Telekinesis, and apparently a gravity beam or something that Steel has on his armor. They are able to stop the tidal wave, and Superman's alive. And you think everything, and right now you think everything's safe, but Doomslayer's still alive, and he sends out his three clones of Doomsday to pretty much destroy the everything. Okay, Action Comics 902. Pre I'd say this is an interesting. I can't wait to see the fight between T Superman and Doomslayer when they can pretty much just go at it now. And now it's going to be super... And now I think how the fight thing's going to work is Superman's going to deal with Doomslayer while, Car while Supergirl, Superboy, and Steel deal with the three Doomsday clones. Okay, anything else I need to say? Um, yeah, this is a pretty great story. I like it. It's a lot better than Ground... I mean, if you're not happy with Grounded and Superman, then I'd recommend picking up Action Comics because this is pretty much a classic Superman story. Superman saves the day. Superman saving the world. Dealing with Doomsday. Dealing with one of his most deadly foes, which is Doomsday. He's, not, he's probably not going to die, but hey, it'll probably be a fun ride. Alright, K-1 
Kid Flash lost. Not for Flashpoint. Kid Flash lost. Number one. This is another three issue mini tie into Flashpoint featuring Bart Allen as Kid Flash. Uh, before I get into the comic, I just want to say that Bear, when DC announced the return, uh, the return of Flash of Barry Allen and that a new Flash ongoing was going to be released, they also said that they might have a new Kid Flash series, but that did not work out. So instead, so now the closest thing we got to a Kid Flash series is this, which is also written by who they planned, Sterling Gates. And now it's a tie-in for Flashpoint, sort of to give Bart his own series. And since this is a Flashpoint tie-in tie -in series, it does come with a little pin, which is like this little logo right here. Unfortunately, my comic book store did not get their pins. So, I don't have it. Sucks. All right, bit. All right, we got a new Hot Pursuit. Try okay, we have someone else in the Hot Pursuit costume trying to... Because, remember, the original Hot Pursuit died. He was killed by the Reverse Flash back in Flash 12. And basically, this Hot Pursuit's riding on, her riding on the motorcycle, but then, all of a sudden, uh, all of a sudden, the bike teleports the new Hot Pursuit somewhere else. Meanwhile, Bart's trying to talk to Barry about letting him help out with cases... And try to take him on as his partner, but Barry just brushes him off, tells him a disgrace to the kid, tells him that Wally was a bear kid flash, and that Bart's just an, an impulsive sham. But then Bart starts to notice that there's some differences in the central city that, in Central City, and also apparently, he, Bart's running smoothly, because, which is strange because Bart has had an artificial knee installed, installed in his leg after he was shot by Deathstroke, after Deathstroke shot him in the knee back in the first issues of the Teen, of Teen Titans. And now we see that Bart is apparently hooked up to some artifact virtual reality machine. And then Bart starts to fight back, and he's able to break out once he realizes it's all, all a dream. And Bart tries to run, but apparently there's no but there's no speed force, so Bart doesn't have his powers. Then giant robots attack Kid Flash, and all under the control of Brainiac. Bart tries to dodge it, but then all of a sudden, Hopper Suit, sho Hopper Suit shows up and gets and helps get Bart make helps Bart make an escape. And we now learn that apparently this is the thirty that this is the thirty first century, and Brainiac has taken over Earth. And so Bar now Bart asks, "Who's the new Hop? The new Hopper Suit? Who is she?" And apparently, it's Barry's friend Patty, who wanted to do something better. Bigger with her life after the whole reverse, reverse flash incident, and she picked up the bike during, and she got the bike during the from the Central City Evidence Lab, and now apparently she says that the helmet says that they're in the 31st century, and immediately Bart starts feeling ill because the time because apparently someone because someone Professor Zoom, Reverse Flash altered the timeline for the flash to make it flat the Flashpoint timeline. And Bart has to get back home immediately and try to repair the timeline because he's starting to fade out of existence. That's right. All right. What have we learned here today? So what have we learned today, kids? If you mess up history, some people will not exist. Prefer most notably, Bart Allen, because his existence is entirely dependent on Barry becoming the Flash. Why? Well, okay, I should have made a timeline for this, but... Once Barry was acquitted of his, of the murder of Professor Zoom, he went to the 30, 31st century, lived with Iris, then they had their kids, then they had their grandkids, and that's how Bart was born. But since Barry never became the Flash and he's not dating Iris, Bart doesn't exist. Potentially, though. He's still, we know he's still existing, but he has to help restore the proper timeline. Otherwise, he'll fade, he'll fade out of existence. Okay, Kid Flash lost. Um, if you're a fan of Bart Allen and you were disappointed when DC decided that this decided not to do the Kid Flash series, I would pick this up because this is probably the closest you're going to get, especially after the relaunch when Bart Allen cha changes forever. Okay, well he won't change forever. He'll just have a different costume. All right, now for my final comic. 
The Reverse Flash, a one-shot featuring the Reverse Flash. This isn't a mini-series, this is just a one-shot, and it doesn't come with a pin. It does not come with a pin. Just want to point that out to you. All right, needless, all this does, all this is, is just basically appeal, look into the Reverse Flash's mind about how he sort of started to get the idea to mess with Barry's childhood. It all started when Professor Zoom decided that since Barry wouldn't let him be a hero, he would try to get, he would try to kill Barry Allen. So, he decided to, so at first, Professor Zoom tried to stop Barry from becoming the Flash. Unfortunately, though, that wouldn't work because Barry... Because for one th thing, if Professor, if Barry never became the Flash, then Prof then the Reverse Flash would not exist. And so now, f the Reverse Flash learns that Barry Barry gaining his powers is essential to his own existence. And he can't kill Barry either because again, essential to his own existence. And that's when the Reverse Flash got the idea to just mess with Barry's life when he became the Flash and try to destroy him. Then, then tried to to get to Barry by destroying Iris. But then finally Bear but then finally Barry the reverse flash learned that he could really get his revenge by messing with Barry's childhood by just baking him, you know, look like a dork and stuff. And apparently this is something else the reverse flash did. He erased Barry's best friend from history. So Barry Allen never had a best friend, which is sad. And even more sad, we get the final for the final pages, it's basically how Professor Zoom, I'm sorry, Reverse Flash decided to release his final, his final revenge on Barry Allen, which was killing Barry Allen's mom. And that apparently is Zoom's revenge. Okay, if you like the Reverse Flash, if he's maybe one of your favorite villains, then I would pick up this one shot because it definitely gives you a little peek inside his head, see how... He started to get the idea to mess with Barry's childhood and just alter history there, alter history a bit there, and not with, and not really the big stuff such as Barry becoming the Flash, and also how, uh, what else? Oh yeah, and also killing Barry when he's a baby. But here's something interesting though: Barry never became the Flash in Flashpoint, and Flashpoint is Professor Zoom's doing. So how do, you, how did that change? We don't know yet. That's what we have the main Flashpoint series for. Okay. And that's pretty much all my comics this week. So we've got the Reverse Flash one-shot. I'd get it if you're, big, if you're a fan of the Reverse Flash. Gives you a little peek into how his mind works a bit. Kid Flash Lost. <clears throat> if, you were, if you love Bart Allen and you, and you liked his own solo series as Impulse, and if you were disappointed that he didn't get his own... Own, own running series after Barry came back to life and they restarted Flash, then I would say pick this up. Action Comics 902, if, if you're still not happy with Grounded and you want to have a good Superman story, then get then start reading Reign of Doomsdays before, the, before they start to reboot everything. And Young Justice number 5, if you like the TV, if you like the TV show, and, and since there haven't been any new episodes and you really want to know what's going on with the team, then I'd recommend getting the comic book. Ultimate Spider-Man number 160. Sort of, not it doesn't really feel like not just the death of Spider-Man, but also kind of the death of the Ultimate Universe as the way we've known it since the beginning. And Captain America 619, setting up the new status quo for the new Captain America series. New Captain America relaunch series, and another, and also a new ser series featuring sort of a new take on this series by making it feature Steve Rogers and Cap and Bucky back during World War II, making it entirely flashbacks. And I would say comic of the week. I guess I'm gonna go with Ultimate Con Ultimate Spider-Man 160 because this final issue is very well done. And I really liked it. It was a good ending to this story. Ah, gonna miss you, but gonna miss you, Spidey. Ultimate Spidey, not mainstream Spidey. That's entirely different. Okay, Spider-Man 1991. Saying, see you later.